Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're staying safe and well. This arrived today, Monday the 7th of December. Let's see what's inside. And there it is. It is an amphibious aircraft. It's based on a real aircraft that exists in the world. The look, the excitement of sea wind at home on land, in the air, or on the water. This sleek four-place aircraft is the ultimate recreation vehicle. It has retractable undercarriage. You can see the design is quite strange. Huge great vertical fin stabiliser with a relatively small rudder. It has a retractable water rudder along with the undercarriage. This one happens to be the ST model one. There are different versions available. This is the ST model one. I think the wingspan is 1.4 meters, 1,400 millimeters, but we'll check that. So the box has three languages on it. It has English, French, and German. It was actually purchased from Germany. I decided to get this so I could fly it in the snow or frosty conditions, which we do get here in the UK in the winter, especially in the east, or flooded, because our field often floods and we can't fly. But if you've got floats or an amphibious plane, then of course you can. So let's look at the specifications for this. I have a separate sheet showing them in English, so I'll put that up on the screen now. But there, there are some bits of information here. Now this has Fowler flaps. They're really well made. No foam hinging on this whatsoever. <clears throat> you can see the cockpit hinges up and locks in place. Then you actually lift the seats out. And you can put the battery in. Retractable nose gear, retractable main gear and retractable rudder. Well, let's get it opened and get the bits out. So here's the booklet for the sea wind and as you can see this is in French and in fact T2M is a French company. This is all in French. It's a nice little booklet. It's just basically folded sheets of paper stapled at the top. There we are. Look. So. And this is German. French and German, no English. Here's the horizontal stabiliser, horizontal stabiliser and elevator, quite a big elevator, full length. Now it looks as though it's foam hinged, but it isn't, because this foam is broken, you can see light through it, but it has, and it is hinged, one, two, three, four, five hinges all along that horn already in place quick adjust not sure I like those I might replace that got a spar running all the length of the elevator 
And it's got a spar running the whole length of the horizontal stabiliser. Now this has an embedded nylock nut in there. You see it's embedded nylock nut and this plastic piece with clips on. So I think this might just clip in and something screws in or screws in from underneath. I don't know. I've never seen one of these in my life. But that's it. It's very good moulding. Very dense. Look at that. Ooh. This is something different, people. Oh, wow. Look at that. Holy smoke. I don't know where to start. don't know where to start with it. It's got a lot of rubberized gluing. <laughs> now I think that's to make it waterproof. But my goodness, look at that. I don't know what to say, it's ugly as hell, but it's quite futuristic at the same time. So let's start with this back end. Okay, here's your rudder. So there's the rudder. It feels as though it's connected to something somehow. But I don't know how. There's a push rod up here. God knows where the servos are for it. Push rod here. That's for the elevator which goes on up here. Yeah, this is the water rudder which retracts inwards into the fuselage and this has all got uh, this slightly yellowed rubberized cement on it and that is to waterproof it okay so you can see it's an amphibious it's a big ski this is all plastic this is foam There's some metal parts here for your landing gear. Your landing gear retracts in and out from the side of it. Here's your nose wheel with the door. It looks like the wings are probably screw on in some way because there's a big plastic moulding here where a spar goes through. And then it's got some some joiners here with screws. I just don't know. I don't know enough about this one. Let me put it down here. Yeah, so the rudder looks like it's already connected up somehow to a servo somewhere. The elevator push rod is there. It's a very thin bit of wire. And I can understand now why they've got that quick adjust on there because you just slide it on. But it's very thin. Then, of course, we've got this really funny looking bulge here, which would be the engine. It's got an air vent at the back here. And it's got air vents at the front through this plastic moulding. So it will take air in where the motor is and just push it out the back. It's high up and out the back. <clears throat> of course, it's designed that way to keep it away from water and debris and that type of thing. Blue decals along it. The white is all foam. I'm going to reorientate it a little bit so we can take a look at this canopy. It lifts up, I've been told and you can lock it in place somehow. I have no idea how. But apparently it latches in place and stays up. There you are. Now in here is a mess. But in here you have these seats. And you do remove them because that's where you put your battery, right in here. I suppose it acts as ballast. Now I have an awful, awful Dean's, aren't they? These Dean's connector. So that will be going. 
and I'll put an XT60 on it. The speed controller is all, let's see if I can get a better camera angle for you. So the speed controller has got this rubberized cement either side of it. <laughs> That's to waterproof it. It's a 40 amp speed controller. This is gear. So this is a gear sequencer. Then what's this? This is your flaps. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. This is L1 and L2. Oh, lights. Okay, that is, that's your light driver, L1 and L2. So that drives your lights. Why that's connected to your flaps, I have no idea. We then have another gear here. Oh, I see, that plugs into there. Look, I'm making it already. Yeah, okay, so that's your gear. This is... Obviously, you plug that into your flap channel because this feeds the flaps, but it also feeds your lights. Then you've got your speed controller, which is a 40 amp speed controller, all waterproof I might add. And inside the fuselage, it's reorientated again, this is well worth seeing because it's quite bizarre. We have three servos. Now this servo here is a single. Probably your elevator, that's a guess. This has got two, so this I believe would be steering for the front nose wheel and of course your rudder. But then there's one here which has got a wheel on it which could be... I don't know, I've got no idea. No idea. Uh, yeah, wow. Well. And do you know what? There's a servo right at the top here. Goodness knows what that's for. Where does that go? That comes here. Oh, that's one of the flaps. So you have to connect the flaps onto a servo that's mounted up here. Wow, how bizarre is that? Yes, yeah, so let's see if I can get you down. Okay, we're now looking down its throat. Still can't quite get you low enough, but under there, just here, is another servo. Just there. This is weird. There's also a servo in here, but it's protected by a plastic, plastic piece. I suppose that's to keep you waterproof. And then down here, you've actually got a strap of Velcro that just came off. And that goes up to about here. Wow. ST model 40 amp speed controller. 2 to 4 S LiPo. The seats have got magnets on the bottom. So what you do, I mean, not now, I'll just shove it all in there to get it out of the way. This would all be connected to a receiver. And I suppose it would all go in the back there somewhere. I just don't know how. It's just got a mass of wires. And that's why the seats won't go down. But this seat is supposed to go there. And it gets held by magnets. And then this seat goes here. 
and it gets held by magnets, which don't, there you go, yeah, that's held by magnets, and then that closes down. <laughs> what a joke. Right, let's see what else we've got in here. We have a little plastic bottle, and that is for sucking water out. <laughs> Seriously, that's for sucking water out of it. It's quite well wrapped, you know. Oh, okay, this is your rudder tip. That goes somehow. Onto here, I should think. I don't know. This is the prop. I mean, even the prop's really well wrapped. It's a bit overkill, really, if you ask me. Right, it's a two blade prop, which uh, the real one has four blades. I think I'll convert it to three if I can and it is a 12 by 6 so I'll need an 11 by 6 three blade yeah if I can't find an 11 by 6 I'll buy a 12 by 6 three blade and I'll cut it down Okay, here's one of the wings. I'll only get one out. Well, this is nice. Right, so there is a wing. You can see that. It's very thin here. Very thin there. But that's because the wheel has to come up into there. Wow. The rest looks okay. It looks as though it's got a spar right the way through there. And you know what? It actually looks ribbed. Yeah, I think this is in fact, you can see it there. I don't know if you can catch it in this light. It's actually got ribbing. And then it looks as though it's had a thin layer of foam sheeting put over it. You can definitely see the ribbing. Wow, it's different. So this is aileron right, flap right, and you can see they're fowlers because they're embedded into the wing. Where's the servo? Here. Servo must be, again I suppose that's because it needs to be watertight. What's this one? Oh, okay. So this is your servo under here for the aileron and it's already connected up and for your flap you've actually got this here which connects to the servo in the fuselage let me see if I can show you these it's really hard to get these angles right with this camera so there can you see those And this is the Fowler flat part because it goes into the wing. And the ailerons the same, it's Fowler connections. And these have got plastic hinges, as does the aileron. And the aileron's got a carbon spar running through it as well, connecting the hinges. 
This wingtip is an actual float. That's why it's designed this way. It curves over and it acts as a stabilised outrigger. And this has one, two, three lights in the wingtip. So it has a forward facing light. It has a green light. And I believe it has a strobe light as well. Place for your carbon spar. Then these look like they're clips, which clip into these parts on the fuselage. Wow. And there's another wing in here which I don't really want to take out to be honest because it's packed so well. Oh, there's another manual here. Now oh, that would explain it. And this one is in English and this is the proper manual. Now, this says it has a stabiliser but I don't believe it does have a stabiliser. So this is the instruction book I've got in PDF format. Whether it's any good or not, I have no idea. Uh, but it does have deflections. It shows you what uh, movements for the surfaces. And I'm pretty sure somewhere in here it had the CMG. Although it's not there. Yeah, here. 52 millimetres from the leading edge at the root, plus or minus 5 millimetres. Yeah, I don't know what it means by uh, here. It actually says stabiliser. But it doesn't show anything. Sucking bottle. <laughs> it has a sucking bottle. The whole thing sucks if you ask me. <laughs> Okay, it has got 9 gram servos, 17 gram servos, and 36 gram servos. Uh, it does have a servo speed reducer, which would be that thing. I might bypass that because I can set the channel up through my transmitter. Oh dear, 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 dear. Sorry, I lingered on that too long. Let's put it down there. Okay, there's your carbon spar. That's a thick old thing. It's quite thick. And that goes like that through the fuselage. Now this will be a spinner. Two spinners. Oh, how dreadful. So we've got two spinners and they're just foam. So there's no back plate, they just cap over the bolt and you screw them in through a plastic piece that's set in the end of the foam. There's another Y connector here. And there's a little packet full of screws. Different size screws. That's all that's in that box. bigger box and a heavier box. Oh yes of course I forgot about these. These are the sprung undercarriage. It's got a spring here. And this goes like that or something. It goes like that when it when it's retracted, that's why this plastic piece is here. And of course we have two of those. Quite small tyres, just foam. But they're all held on with uh, self-locking nylock nuts. This is screws, yeah. Quite fascinating. One thing I've realised I should have realised it straight away, is because there is a servo inside here on the top of a bulkhead, 
that you need to connect your flaps onto through this once your wings in place you're not gonna easily be able to take it off I can see I'm gonna have fun with this one well they work well now the aileron obviously has a direct link to the servo but this must have a bell crank in it because I'm actually pulling here and it's pushing something down there so it must have one of these L bell cranks on it very clever well, that's all tucked away inside here inside the wing wow let's see how far the spar goes down But it has a spar, you can see it here, right the way through. I wish I could get the light right, so, oh there you go. So you can pick up this ribbing. And on the underside as well, you can see there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. It's almost worth cutting a hole. Yeah, very good, very unusual, I must have been drunk at the time I ordered this. <laughs> wow, so what do you think, you think I'm nuts, so am I mad or am I mad, but it's, oh I don't know what have I done, what have I done, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching, stay safe, stay well. And I will see you on another video. Cheers.